Recap, chapter 3, section 4. So we're going to solve equations, exponential logarithmic equations. So we're going to have to use all of our exponent rules, log rules, to help us do this. Um, so let's first recall some of the basic ones. If we have this a to the x equals a to the y, we should recall that x equals y here. This is the one-to-one -one property of exponent property. The same thing is true if you have a log base a of x equal log base a of y, then x has to be equal to y. So those two are known as the one to one property for solving. Then these other ones we talked about, so we have a to the power of log base a of x. That's going to equal x, and we have log base a of a to the x, that's also equal to x. And these are just using the inverse rules, so inverse rules. And so we have, um, if we use our log rules here, if we have this power, this power that of the log could be written out as the x as a product. And so we have x times log base a of a. And then we need to recall that log base a of a comes from like the a to the first equal a in exponent form is 1. So this is just x times 1, which is just x. And this, so let's come to some of the background to recall how we get these to equal x, how these are inverses of each other, they undo. So you have this exponent here, and then the log of the same base, those are inverses. So we're going to use these two uh, properties to help us solve log and exponent equations. So we have two different things to do to solve. We have one is to rewrite the original equation in a form that allows the one-to-one -one property. So if you can write one-to-one -one property, get the two bases for logs or just the bases of the power equivalent, then you can make it one-to-one. -one. Two, if you cannot do that, then you need to apply the inverse property to isolate the variable. You may need to isolate the log or the power first before you can apply the inverse property to isolate the variable. So we're going to just go through a bunch of examples here. We're going to start easy and get to more difficult. So we're going to start with one you should know. If we have x squared equals 12, to isolate x, we're going to use the inverse. The inverse of squaring is square rooting. So when you square root both sides, we find x is equivalent to plus or minus square root of 12 which is equivalent to plus or minus 2 root 3. And so that's going back to solving squares. So we're going to use where our x is our exponent. It's a little more complicated. What's the inverse of x being an exponent is a log. So to undo this, we can do log base 3 to both sides. Log base 3. And so this log base 3 of 3 to the x is x. And that's equal to whatever log base 3 of 12 is. And to solve this, you can use change of base to evaluate that or to approximate it. But I'm going to leave it exact for right now. So in blue in the original problem is an exponent form. If you put that blue exponent form into log form, you'd get the same answer. So we could either use the inverse property, or for this one, we can simply just change the form of it, make it the inverse uh, by using the uh, changing the form of it. So number three here, we're starting with a log now. So the inverse of a log, we first find its base, this is log base 2 of x. So to isolate x, I'm going to make both sides have a base 2. Whatever I do to one side, I do to the other. All the properties of algebra are all true. All your um, isolating rules, you still have to follow those. So this is 2 to the power of log base 2 of x, which ends up being x. And it's equal to whatever 2 to the 6 is, which is 64. Uh, and so we can again, we, we take the blue original problem, which is in log form, and we put it into exponential form, we get 2 to the 6 equals x. And so that's another way of doing those simple uh, problems, those one step problems. So e to the x, so to solve this, we're going to use the natural log. The inverse will be log base e, which is the natural log. The natural log to both sides, so we get x equals the natural log 5. So if you need to see that, that, that's really the log base e of e to the x is what we're really doing over here to find our x. Natural log is log base e. 
find if we start off with the natural log, and this is log base e of x equals 4. So to find our value for x here, we need to have the both sides have a base e. And we end up getting x equals e to the fourth. So what we're talking about here is how if we have an exponent, you want to take the log of the same base to both sides. If you're given a log, you want to make both sides have the base of this base. And so those are the two inverse rules to help us isolate or solve x. Okay, let's get more, a little more difficult. I'll still call this easy. This is a one-to-one. -one. I think this is kind of a puzzle because we have our base. One-fifth is our base. So we want to make the other side be written as one-fifth. Or we can change one-fifth a little bit to help us find uh, is the same base. So like one-fifth I can write as five to the negative one raised to the x power. Then 125 I can write as five to the third power. So now they both have the same base, base five. So then I know, and actually I could rewrite this, this is a power to a power, so I multiply there, five to the negative x equals five to third. So the negative x has to equal three because the one to one property, so x has to be negative three. So this is one to one property, kind of a puzzle to find the same base uh, so then you can just take the powers, the exponents, and send them equal to, to each other. So using the inverse. So here we cannot make them the same base, base 2. And actually there's a bunch of other junk here. We have our power right here. But then we have a product in front here, and we have a sum over here. So we have some other mess. So even before we start solving, I would get rid of the stuff around our power. So I would first subtract 4. So you usually try to isolate the power first. So then we have 11 minus 4, so we get 7. Then we can divide both sides by 6, that will get rid of the coefficient here. So we have 2 to the t plus 5 power equals 7, 6. So now we need to get either both sides have a base of 2, which isn't going to happen with 7, 6, or we can do the inverse. So the inverse of base 2 will be log base 2 to both sides. So these are now inverses, so I get t plus 5, whatever this exponent is, equals log base 2 of 7, 6. Last step, we subtract both sides by 5. So then t, leaving it exact, would be log base 2 of 7, 6, all minus 5. And that would be exact. So I don't, there's a mess over here, but all we're trying to do is isolate t, get t by itself. So we're doing the inverse rules to do that. Okay, so a little bit harder here. When you look at here, now I have e, and I have e to 2x, and I have e to x, then I have no e. So I have three terms where it's e to the 2x and e to the 1x, which reminds me a lot of a problem maybe like this. If I'd said like m squared minus 7m plus 12. So thinking of e as more of a variable rather than the, number, than the value it is. So if I factor this, I have m minus 4 times m minus 3. So then those would fold together to give us our original problem here in red. So let's use that same setup over here in blue where if we factor this, we get, instead of using m, it's e to the x minus 4 and e to the x minus 3. Now those would foil together to be the original one in blue. So now to solve this, we're going to set each of these quantities equal to 0 because it equals 0. So e to the x equals 4 and e to the x equals 3 if I add both sides to isolate the e to the x. So then I can solve this, and to solve this, I'm going to do the natural log to both sides. Let me show that in a different color. So we're going to do the natural log to both sides. So we get x equals the natural log 4, and do the same thing on this side, and you get x is the natural log 3. So then we actually have these other two solutions for x. So now we start bringing in some of our old algebra factoring with our exponents. So difficult. Now we're doing the logs. 
and we have multiple logs within one problem, and we're going to include a lot more of algebra within this problem. So, first thing we need to realize is that this is log base 10. And log base 10. So now I say they're both the same base. So if I have log base 10 and log base 10 with an addition, I'm now thinking I can condense this. So I can write this with one log, log base 10. So when we're solving, we usually want to get down to one log. So this will be log base 10 of, now we have to multiply those two quantities. So the addition tells us we multiply what we're taking the log of. So if I FOIL that, I'm getting x squared plus 5x plus 4. So now I have this equation to deal with. And then to get rid of this log, I'm going to have both sides have a base 10. 10. So 10 to the power of log base 10, those are inverses, so I just have this quantity, x squared plus 5x plus 4 equals, the right hand side is 10 to the first power, which is 10. So now I just have a quadratic equation to solve, so I'm going to subtract both sides by 10. So you can see why this is more difficult, because we're not only using logs, we're using all of our quadratic knowledge. And we had to condense it to begin with. So we're at this spot. Now that we have it equals zero, standard form, now we can try solving it. And this ends up being factual. So we have x plus 6 and x minus 1. And so that's our factors. And so then we know x has to equal negative 6 and x has to equal 1. Now, let's check this. We have two answers here. So let's plug it back in our original problem. We're taking the log log base 10 of x plus 4. So if I put 1 in here, it's log base 10 of 5 and log base 10 of, of 2. Sounds great. Shouldn't be change of base so you can find a value. If we plug in a negative value, so we plug in a negative 6 here and a negative 6 here. So this would be log base 10 of negative 2. Let's put this in exponent form and figure out what's happening. So I have this equal some value m. This is in exponential form would be 10 to the m equals negative 2. Can I raise 10 to any power, um, multiply a bunch of 10s to, to any power and get a negative? No. We cannot take the negative log. We cannot take the log of a negative value. So this right here is extraneous. The x equals negative 6 does not work. There's only one solution here. Um, x has to equal 1. So this problem is fairly difficult to have all that combined in one problem and still know there's an extraneous solution. So we still need to check that. For logs, it's pretty simple. If you if your x value causes causes you to take a negative log, it won't happen. So before I let you go, I'm going to give you your homework problem. So this will be your homework video problem. So go through your inverse rules to solve this. Be careful with it and see how you do. We'll see you tomorrow.